Amen. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah 48. I won't lie, I was a little bit scared that Tristan was going to take my uh, passage for his welcome there. He said, Jeremiah said, what chapter, bro? Right, right, right. Jeremiah 48. You know, this last week, it was actually really, really awesome. Very encouraging, inspiring, convicting, uh, but motivating. You know what I mean? And just having the Enos's here was just such a treat, I believe. Uh, as it just gives us just that unity amongst the kingdom. Yeah, And I mean, like they're preaching the exact same thing yeah. all the way out in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I think, I think time-wise, that's about a uh, 16, 18 hour drive from here. Yeah, I mean, but they got the same convictions. Yeah. Same scriptures, yeah. same principles, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, it's interesting as uh, Christian preached powerfully there for uh, our leaders meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I took notice at his Bible. Is that a pretty awesome Bible? I don't think it's a size his Bible at all, but it's goatskin. And then you think about my goatskin Bible at home. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It felt nice, and I, I opened it up to that first page, and you know, in the first couple pages, usually there's that, like, to who it's for, yeah. who it's from, yeah, yeah. if lost, contact is not, you know what I mean? It's that all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, one of the brothers in Utah actually gave Christian this Bible as a gift, wow. and the whole left side, there's, like, this whole uh, message to Christian. Okay. Now, I didn't memorize the message to verbatim, but... I did memorize this passage. Oh, wow. And the reason being is because this time it just stood out to me. On, yeah, yeah. And like, this is a passage that is meant for men. Yeah. It is meant for this room here tonight. Yeah. So I, I hope you're encouraged by it as I was. And it's Jeremiah 48. Come on. Come on. And in verse 10, it, there, bro. it says, A curse on anyone who is lax in doing the Lord's work. A curse on anyone who keeps the sword from bloodshed. It depends. That here, God Himself says that your sword must not be kept from bloodshed. Wow. You better keep that hand on that sword yeah. and get your butt down on that field and slay some demons for our God. Now, if curses anyone who keeps your sword from bloodshed, or what does that mean on the reverse? Yeah. Blessed. Wow. Be the ones yeah. that use the sword yeah. for bloodshed. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on, bro. So, my title for us tonight, Blessed Bloodshed. Woo! Okay. That's fire, bro. Blessed Bloodshed. Come on, bro. Now, what blood... Are we to shed so that we are not cursed but rather blessed on, by our God? Up, Point number one shed the prideful blood. Shed the prideful blood. Go to 1 Samuel 15. Shed the prideful blood. We're going to. Jump into uh, studying out the account of King Saul. Wow. King Saul, as we know, is a man chosen by God to be the first ever chosen king over Israel. And in chapter 15 of 1 Samuel, the first part is God calling Saul to completely wipe out the enemies of God and God's people, yep. the Amalekites. Yeah. Yeah. The command literally was to put to death men, women, children, yep. infants, cattle, sheep, yeah. camels, and donkeys. That's right, bro. All of them. Come on, oh, bro. That's right. Every single one of them says, don't leave one alive. Whoa. Yeah, come on. Why? Like, these are the enemies yep. of the Lord's people. 
And so Saul returns from the battle with his head held high. Mm. And let's see, did Saul accomplish the very command of our God? Pick it up here in verse 12. Come on, bro. It says here, early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told, Saul has gone, gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this bleeding of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Let's pause there real quick. Here you see Samuel early in the morning. You know, he had his quiet time. And he goes to catch up with Saul to find out he's at Carmel. And he's setting up this monument. This glorious, awesome, cranking looking right, right. monument. Come on, bro. Come on. In honor of who? Himself. Wow. Oh, amen. I'm sure maybe he had a little more definition on the abs there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it made, made the, the biceps look a little more chipped, more cut. You know what I mean? It's an honor of himself yeah. rather than an honor of God. Wow. And when he yeah. sees Samuel, he says, Hey, bless you. The Lord bless you. Hey, I, I've obeyed the instructions of my God. Mm. And Samuel says, Wait, what, what is this bleeding of sheep that I hear then? Oh, wow. See, Samuel already knew. Yeah. Because God had revealed to Samuel yeah. that Saul did not actually carry out the Lord's instruction. Come on. Yeah. And I think what's intense here about this is that in the same way, God, I believe, already knows when we have or have not obeyed his instructions. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's the right point. And God will bring to light. Those who have not completely obeyed. Yeah, bro. Come yeah, bro. Samuel, sure, maybe let's say God did not tell Samuel, but God would still have known. Yeah. And God would have revealed it. Yeah. <laughs> I think what, what's intense to me is, Saul, if you read his entire account, his entire life account, he ends up getting pushed to a corner because of his pride. Yeah. To literally suicide. Yeah. And I believe in the same way, if we do not deal with our pride, yeah. we don't put to death our pride, it will kill us spiritually. Right. Come on, bro. Let's keep reading, see what happens. Come on. Verse 15. Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, Although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribe of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and the evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took the sheep and cattle from the plunder. The best of all was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. Mm -hmm. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? Wow! To obey is better than sacrifice, Woo! and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Yep. So rebellion is like the sin of divination yep. and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Wow, man! Wow, Come on. That's what, is, what does Saul do as soon as Samuel says, "Hey, what is this bleeding of sheep I hear?" He said, "Well, the soldiers." Wow. It was then they brought the sheep and cattle, wow. but everything else I promise we destroyed the rest. Wow. And he says, "Dude, here's the thing. God spoke to me last night. 
Right. And Saul is so like oblivious here. And you know, at this point of the reading, you're like, okay, either either he's really clueless, yeah. or he's very self-deceived, yeah. or he's just a flat out liar. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because as Samuel begins to explain to what God revealed to him, I believe Samuel is trying to remind them yeah. that the glory, the honor actually belong to God. Yeah. He's like, once you were small in your own eyes, yeah. and God chose you. And now you're no longer small in your own eyes. Now you're this big monument that you set up. Yeah. Right. Now, now you think that you're somebody. Yeah. Right. You let your head get Come big. Yeah. Come on, bro. You got to fight all the glory is you. You, you earned your money. That, you got your fitness. Come on. You got your life together. Come on, and you give bro. zero glory to God. Come on, bro. Come on. And what is Saul's response? He says, I did obey the God. What are you talking? I obeyed your God. Wow. He's like, I, I, I destroyed all the Amalekites, but I, I reserved Agag, the king. It's intense how somebody in their pride can be so self-deceived. Right. They don't even realize the contradictions coming out of their mouth. Right. Yeah, it's so real. I killed them all, but that one guy, the king. Mm. So he didn't kill them all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come on. And then he brings the soldiers, he brings back the soldiers. They brought out the cattle, but he justifies it. Mm. But they're, they're offering the cattle and sheep to God. Isn't that a good thing? Shouldn't God be like grateful for that? I mean, can I just like do tick for tack? Not fully obey this section, but I know I should sacrifice, so I brought the sacrifices. Wow. Man. And he was justifying the actions of the people, but really, he was just a people pleaser. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, bro. Come on, bro. Absolutely. Why was he a people pleaser? He was insecure. That, and what is the root of insecurity? Pride. Yeah, come on, bro. That's so true. He was afraid of what the people would think about him. Come on, bro. Yeah. That he was so lost in the sauce. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. And thought that he was actually doing right by God. Come on, bro. Man. He was doing right by himself only. Yep. Yeah. Now, what's crazy here is I can actually relate to Saul. Yeah, yeah bro. And I don't know if anybody else here yeah. can relate to Saul in any yeah, shape or form. But in my mind, I'm like, if I'm in Saul's sandals, right? Awesome. I'm like. Hey, I, I got the land. They didn't try me to get the, I got the land. Sure, I didn't destroy them all, but the land is ours. I mean, what, that one king going to do something to us? You know what I'm saying? Like, in my simple nature, my pride, I can relate to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, I reserve the sheep and cattle, but what, the sheep won't, like, pick up a sword and kill one of the Israelites? Like, no. And, and besides, I plan to kill him. I, I want to kill him later on the altar. So I will wipe it all out. I'm just waiting for the right time. Wow. And that King Agag, I mean, I feel like he should suffer a little longer. I want him to really feel it. That's why I haven't killed him yet. I want to show him our great nation, our great kingdom first. And then maybe I'll kill him. Who's to say I wasn't planning to kill him, Samuel? Are you trying to accuse me? Wow. Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could have justified in so different areas. You know what I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, it says that God preferred humility. Yeah, bro. Come on. God preferred him to be righteous than try yeah. to be right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. God preferred for him to be obedient fully yeah. than partially. Yeah. Come on, bro. And now, why was it so hard for Saul to obey fully? Well, it's funny. We, we do have a song that we sing here in the kingdom, and it goes like this Trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus than to trust and oh he lacked trust. Yep. Mm, right. Yeah. Right. He lacked trust. There you go. He did not trust God. Come on, bro. That's ultimately what it went down to. It's, that's what it fit to. It boiled down to just trust to faith. Yeah. Come on, bro. Saul did not trust God. Yep. Saul did not trust God's prophet. Come on. Saul did not trust God's word. Come on. But who did he trust? Himself. There you go, bro. Come on. You're preaching. He trusted his own ideas. Yeah. Yep. He trusted his own wisdom. Preach that, bro. He just trusted everything that came from him, what he could control. Yeah. 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 Come on, bro. And you know what that led to? A lifestyle of torment. Come on. Yeah. 
Because for the rest of his life, he'd be freaked out of who's going to take his throne. Yep. Who's going to checkmate me? I can't trust my, my own son. Wow. Like he had to sleep looking over his shoulder that night. Wow. Why he didn't trust God. Come on. Could you imagine how restless that would be? Yeah. I mean, we were there in the world. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't trust nobody. Yeah. Amen. I think it, it, it's funny. I can remember many prideful moments in my own life. To name a couple, I remember uh, one time my dad corrected me. Honestly, I don't remember what it was about exactly. But remember he asked me a question. He's like, Eric, what, what's, what's smarter? Because he wanted, he wanted to teach me to work smarter, not harder. So he's like, hey, what's smarter? Would you rather carry a ton of bricks on your back up a steep hill or load them on a truck and drive them up? I was so prideful. I said, I'd rather carry them on my back. I was like 15 years old or something. You know what I mean? Because I knew you were talking to a point about whatever we were talking about. And I was like, no, I'm not kidding. I'll carry it on my back. I remember another time uh, when I was like starving at this party, but the food was still being prepped and whatnot. I was telling my uncle, man, I'm starving. He says, hey, eat a, a, a spoonful of the salsa. And I was like, all right. Take a whole spoonful of hot sauce. Man, I was dying for the rest of the party. <laughs> To try to act it like I was cool. Right. Come on. There was one moment in particular that I wanted to share tonight when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I was super prideful, man. There's so many. I can share many more. But I think I think this one will be uh, very very humorous for you guys to hear. I was about 12 years old, and uh, me and my little brother we went to a 7-Eleven down the street around the corner, and we bought some hot Cheetos as we enjoyed eating those. But we got into this whole like discussion on who can like take the spiciest like chips. Okay. And I'm the oldest, so I, obviously I got a you know I got a reputation to uphold here. Yeah. And I said, bro, I, dude, you, you can't even handle my level. I'm like, bro, I can I can. And we're like throwing all these like put, like hypotheticals, like if I ate that, man, you wouldn't be able to eat that or whatever. <laughs> and eventually, I got to the topic how we got home, and he's like, bro, you want to put tapatio in those hot Cheetos, drench them, and eat them. I said, bro, that's easy. Open the bag. I drenched. I got even the, like sprinkle. Like I drenched it. No. Like like when you when you put it, it's like soggy now. Right. It was there. It was that bad. Amen. And I started eating them, and man, it was like after a couple of bites, it was just regret. Wow. Yeah. Like interior in my heart, like just regret. Yeah. From the exterior, I'm like, this isn't that bad, man. And the next thing you know, man, like my 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 nose starts dripping. Wow. I'm like. Yeah, every like a couple seconds, wow. Wow. and I'm sorry, like huffing and puffing, like cause it's like hot, and, and then eventually I get to the point where I finish the entire bag, and it's still like I, I thought it would be gone in like a couple. Of, no, it was still like really spiced out, and I get lightheaded, oh. and then I've never since then had have had this experience. But I got so lightheaded I couldn't stand up no more. I had to like I went to a wall and just like slid down and was sitting on the ground for a little bit. And I like called out to my dad to give me some water. Now, here's the funny part. Prior to this, my dad told me not to do it. Oh, man. Oh, man. I did it anyways. Amen. Come on, bro. And he walked out with the water bottle, just looked at me for, for a little bit, and shook his head. As I'm like, I'm like, Dude, come on, like, I don't care. I'll just give me the water. And he finally gave me the cold water, and I chugged it down. And it did help some. But as you know, water just spreads it even more. Yeah, that's so true. But it's pride. Yeah. Come on, bro. Like, I, 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 I didn't have to eat the hot chips with the hot sauce. No. But I wanted to prove something. Come on, bro. I want to show my little brother yeah. that I am somebody. Come on. I mean, I got I to gotta protect my reputation here. Come on. You Come understand, on. right? Come on, bro. And that's where Saul was. Yeah. Saul was at a point. Where he just he wanted to have a, a good reputation amongst men, wow. rather than have a good reputation before God. Come on, yeah, bro. Come on, bro. Now here, here's the interesting thing, and Sunday I talked to uh, one of the brothers here this morning about this concept. Some may say that Saul was you know humble and an awesome dude at the beginning, and got corrupt because of the circumstances that came about later. Yeah. I actually don't necessarily agree with that. I believe he was corrupt since the beginning. Interesting. Now, here's the truth, though. 
we're all corrupt since the beginning. That's so true. Even King David, yeah. who was known later to be the man after God's own heart, yeah. was corrupt since the beginning. Preach, These situations did not cause him to become prideful. Yeah. These moments did not bring forth not a hardening of his heart. No, it just exposed where his heart was already. Wow. And the question was when it was exposed, what are you going to do? Come on. Are you going to deal with it? Are you going to purify it? Or are you going to hold on to that pride yeah, come on, bro. and not let go? Right. Come on, bro. He was there at a fork in the road. Come on. He had a decision. Samuel knew because God knew. Yeah. And he could have said, you know what, dude, you're right. I didn't fully obey. You said this for everything. We got Agag here, bro. What should we do? Can you ask God? I totally messed up. I believe he would have been accepted as king still. Come on, bro. Right, right. Right, but unfortunately, right. he held on to his pride. Yeah. He did not shed the prideful blood. Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on. Amen. See, for us, we understand to be humble means to think of yourself less, not to think less of yourself. Come on. Yeah. It's not put yourself down. Yeah. But, you know, you just think more of others. Yeah. Like, man, how can I lift up Zach? Right. How can I lift up Tristan? Yeah. How can I lift up Kevin? Like, that's what it means to be humble. I'm thinking about other people's interests before my own. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You know, you got to beg God to remove your pride every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. Bro. I think of David. Like, this dude wrote so many psalms. Wow. Yeah. There's not one psalm from Saul. No, sir, that's true. There's no, like, psalm from Saul where he's begging God, God, I'm a wretched man. I'm so prideful. Take this away from me. Wow. But David had many of them. That's so yeah. true. Come on. He begged God consistently. Yeah, absolutely. And ultimately, humility is a decision. Come on, bro. It's but a choice. That. A choice to let go and let God. Yep. Pride is you trying to hold on and control. Come on. Right. Control your image, control your life, control your finance, whatever it is. Control whatever you're trying to control. But the truth is, you don't have control. Come on, right. Come on bro. The only control you have is what you do and what you don't do. Yeah. Right. And that's it. The rest is just glory to God. Come on. So, guys, let's shed the prideful blood on, tonight. Come on, point number two. Point number two, shed the lustful blood. Oh, bro, let's go, go to Matthew bro. chapter 5. Let's Come on. go there, bro. Come on. Matthew chapter 5. Shed the lustful blood. Verse 21. Sorry, verse 27. You have heard that it was said, you should not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. And I hear Jesus is teaching us the heart of the law. That is not just sin to go commit adultery, but to look at a woman lustfully. That that you're practically committing adultery by doing so. What does that mean to look at a woman lustfully? It means that you look at her and fantasize and desire and drool about marriage things. Come on, yeah. bro. Come on. Things that only marriage couples can do. Yeah. Come on. That's what it means to look at a woman lustfully. Yep. Absolutely. And that is something to clarify. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, Kevin, okay, he, he's a good looking brother. Nothing wrong with that. That's not lustful. It's what you know. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> so when you start thinking about a woman like sexually, yeah. yeah. Now that's lustful. There you go. Man. And purely, now that's lustful. Yeah. And Jesus says, if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Yeah. If your hand, cut it off. Yeah. You know what that means? You got to shed the lustful blood. Mm. Come on, bro. You got to shed blood. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. That, bro. To fight against lust. Yeah. Yeah. You got to shed blood to be a man who is known for pureness. Yeah. Come on. And Jesus, I don't believe, is speaking in exaggeration. Mm. But rather, more so, he's helping us understand in hyperbole yeah. that this right here is how serious, right. Come on. how radical yeah. we on. ought to be when we handle 
our pureness. Oh, oh. that. See, I remember, uh, funny enough, growing up in California, we, we had a rat problem, a little mouse problem um, in our apartment. There was maybe like five of them or something, a little hole in our closet. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up trying doing the traps, the ones that snap when you put cheese on it, and it kind of has got the, the little uh, was it lever trigger, right? It like snaps and like, yeah, it just splatters it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but we realized very, very quickly that these rats were actually, or these mice were very, very smart. Oh, wow. As we would go look at the trap, like after a, a week or something, cheese is gone, wow. and the trap is still set. It didn't even snap at all. That's crazy. So we kind of wasted our money on those there. And so we ended up going back and buying some other ones. We bought the nice big old sticky ones. There you go. You guys ever used those before? Yeah. Put a couple around the uh, kitchen and the closet and whatnot. And we ended up actually catching two Whoa. on one sticky glue Ooh, trap. Wow. They were very, very effective. Yeah. Wow. And uh, it's intense, man. Just seeing these poor little rats that were stuck. They couldn't go nowhere. You can hear them squeaking, yep. almost like calling out to the other ones to come help or something. And uh, it's intense because when we went back to look at them, I kind of waited because, you know, I was a kid at the time, probably like nine years old or something. I forget the age, but I was waiting for my dad to get home. But by the time my dad and my pops got home, I looked back there and I saw these rats. They began to gnaw away at their arm to be set free. That's crazy. Like these guys were willing to cut off their hand to be set free from the sticky trap. That's crazy. That's crazy. And I believe it's got to be the same way for us in our purity. Come on! Come on! You better finish that, Come on! Shit. Impurity, lustfulness, yeah. is but a sticky trap set by Satan. Yeah, come on! And when you let yourself go, it just becomes easier. You get more stuck. Yeah. I mean, I want to, to share a little more about that, the, 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 the mice there. It was only one that was gnawing away. The other one, he actually got so stuck, his face was stuck to the thing. And he tried, like, tearing off. It was terrible. It was nasty. But that's how Satan works. The more you get into impurity and lustfulness, yeah. the more stuck you are. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. But we got to be willing to gnaw off, cut off our hands, get radical. Come on. So we can show up to heaven, sure, missing an eye, missing a leg, missing an arm, but at least we get to do with the Heavenly Father Come on. for eternity. Oh, yeah. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4 says that you have not struggled with sin to the point of shedding your own blood. Come on, bro. Yeah. See, some of those we still struggle with our impurity, our lustfulness, because we have not struggled to the point of shedding our own blood. Getting radical, going the extra mile, getting creative. Come on. And I do believe that's what we have to fight to do. I mean, give you a couple of different ideas I've here. Switching your phone. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I, I've known those in the past that got from smartphones to dumb phones. Yeah. And getting a nice little flip phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. That can help you out of time. That's an option. Get radical. Sure. People may think different things about you, but that's how we shed the blood of pride at the beginning. Because right. who cares what they think? Right. Maybe yes, delete all social medias. There you go. Maybe delete uh, Instagram, Snapchat. I mean, I don't know, Facebook. There's so many uh, social medias out there that people have, and they just use it for the motive of impurity. Come on, yeah, bro. Come on. Download uh, porn blockers. I mean, we talked about that earlier during the good news. I mean, go talk to that brother and get that yeah, that that app. There. What was that app, bro? I want to use that too. Hey, can we keep them accountable? Whatever it is, we got to get radical. Come on, get to that next level. You know, when you look at, dude, there's a girl walking by inappropriately. It's like, oh, she's, well, she dressed that way, so I mean, I gotta look. Like, no, no, you don't have to look, actually. That's so true. true. Three step, bro. Three step, bro. Like, having two cats, I very much learned that phrase, curiosity kills the cat. My cats are so curious, man. Yep. Like, Bo has burned his little paw on the stove a couple times now. Yep. That boy's so curious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It literally can kill a cat. And the same way as like our curiosity, like I'm just kind of curious. Like no, no, you don't be curious. Right. Don't be, you don't have to look. Don't. And there's that same idea of letting like if you let even that little bit that, that one stare, 
And it's easier to do the two stairs, yep. the three stairs, yep. the social media schools, right. the, the, the engine search uh, for uh, websites, or old websites. It becomes easier and easier. But if you can cut it off here, yeah. then you're, you're, you're gnawing away. Yeah. You're cutting off the lustfulness. Come on. Preaching, bro. Memorize scriptures on sexual purity. Yeah. 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 Have brothers stay the night at your place. Yep. Maybe you stay at night at the brother's place. Right. Maybe you do a prayer night at, at night. Right. Maybe when you're feeling tempted at like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., hit up the men's chat. Right. You know what I've always noticed in the past? When one brother's struggling, there's another brother struggling also in that ministry. Yeah. And if they were the open, they would have been able to pray with each other. Kept each other accountable. Wow. Yeah. I think for us, we also got to just stop justifying our actions. Yeah, yeah bro. That's a big one, bro. Come on. I think like Saul, Saul and then the last point, justified his decisions. Yeah. We can tend to think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It was just one look. I didn't, I didn't commit adultery with her. But here Jesus says, no, it is a big deal. Because it's just like he did commit adultery with her. Come on. That, bro. And figure out the why. Like, what's the root of it? Yeah. While you're fighting to put these blocks and get accountability in it, figure out the root yeah. in prayer. Yeah. Come on. Really pray through. Like, what's the root of this thing? Come on. Is it boredom? Is it discouragement? Is it guilt? Come on. Is it anxiety? Is it anger? Is it apathy? Which, mind you, apathy is another word for carelessness. Which really means you do care, but you're hurting your heart in that area because you don't want to care because it's going to hurt you. So you really do care, but you're trying to pretend like you don't care. It's just pride. But what is it? What What is the root? What was the first time you committed it? What went on during that period? Were you angry then? Whatever it is, figure out the root. They got to make it clear. Yeah, so you can not just deal with the fruit, but deal with that root. Yeah, come on, make it wither all the way down. Shed the lustful blood. Point number three. On, Shed the merciless blood. Go to Hebrews 9. Come on, let's go there, bro. Shed the merciless blood. On, bro. Hebrews chapter 9. It's there, bro. Come on, bro. You're preaching, bro. This is awesome. Hebrews 9, verse 16. Come on. Says here, in the case of a will, it is necessary to prove the death of the one who made it, because a will is in force only when somebody has died. It never takes effect while the one who made it is living. This is why even the first covenant was not put into effect without blood. When Moses had proclaimed every command of the law to all the people, he took the blood of calves together with water, scarlet wool, and branches of hyssop, and sprinkled the scroll on all the people. He said, this is the blood of the covenant, which God has commanded you to keep. In the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and everything used in its ceremonies. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Here we get an explanation of the new covenant. That it's described and compared to being like a will. Since the one who made, made, made the will, yeah. the will does not go into effect of the one who made it dies. Yeah. In the same way, God has given us a new covenant. Yeah. And it cannot go into effect till he who made it dies. Yeah. And when did Jesus die? On that cross. Uh-huh. Now death cannot keep a hold on him, so he did resurrect, so glory to God for that. Uh-huh. But that was the moment. That the new covenant came into effect. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. And it says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Yeah. Even in the, in the law of Moses, they killed calves. And they would sprinkle that blood in everything. All oh, the people and the scroll, the tabernacle, everything would be lathered in blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why? Because people wanted to be atoned for their sin. Yeah. They wanted mercy. And the same way for the new covenant... We get mercy through the shedding of our Lord's blood. Yep. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. Come on. And still yet, I believe for us, some of us, we struggle giving mercy to others. Yeah. And still us, we struggle giving forgiveness, 
having love and compassion and patience for others. Right. First Peter 3.21 teaches that Jesus suffered, leaving us an example to follow. Right. So if Jesus is willing to die on that cross and become sin for you and I, yeah. that we must be willing to die to ourselves on our cross and become, in a sense, sin for the sake of mercy and forgiveness. Right. We gotta shed the blood of merciless. Come on. Come on, bro. We we gotta learn to just forgive. Yeah, bro. I mean, Jesus, he was a man who was innocent. Not like partly innocent, like kind of like in our court system, or he's innocent, let him go. No, he was fully innocent. Yeah. yeah. Like nothing stuck on this guy. Come on, bro. He was squeaky clean. Come on. Yeah. And yet went up on that cross for your faults, my shortcomings, yeah. their wrongdoings, right. on, so they can know mercy. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like that, that's insane. That's like a crazy concept. Like why would somebody do that? Mm. Come on. But that's why it's called mercy. Come on, bro. Come on. See, there's a story of a, a mother who once approached Napoleon seeking a pardon for her son. The emperor replied that the young man had committed a certain offense, not once, but twice. And justice demanded death. The mother said, but I, I don't ask for justice. I plead for mercy. But your son does not deserve mercy, Napoleon replied. So the woman cried, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. And mercy is all I ask for. Wow. Wow. Well then, the emperor said, I will have mercy. Wow. Wow. And he spared the woman's son. Wow. Wow. Okay. Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is a pretty wicked dude here. Yeah. And still, he was willing to understand the concept of mercy because yeah. his woman was pleading for it. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. How much more God is perfect? Right. Because you want to show you mercy. Right. So not only should you be merciful to others, but also to yourself. Yeah, bro. You should show yourself some grace. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. You should let yourself open up your heart and let the grace of God just lavish you. Yeah. Come on. Not walk around downcasted. Yeah. Come on, man. As if you were some pagan or some tax collector. Right. Oh, man. right. Like this from right here, these are sons of God. Yeah. Oh. And when one of the other sons of God yep. hurts you, sins against you, mm. sometimes even when they hurt you, it wasn't really sin. It was just probably not the best way to go about it. Yeah. That you show mercy to them. Come on. Right. Yeah, bro. That you show love to them. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Come on. That you're willing to let bygones be bygones. Forgive and forget. Yep. As the saying goes. Come on, bro. And I think for us, the challenge is if anyone in this room has hurt you, has caused you maybe a thorn in your side, as Paul talks about, Come on. just forgive. Yeah. yeah. Just forgive, like right now. Come on. Like not even tonight, like right now. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Like there's no need to, but I need to talk to him. No, no, no. Right now. Come on. Jesus didn't say, let me just go make sure and talk to every single person, then I'll die for them. Let me just see if it's like if they're worthy enough. No, no, no. Come on, bro. They don't deserve mercy. It doesn't matter if they, they appeal to whatever you want them to appeal to or if they don't. Yeah. Mercy is that they don't deserve it. Come on. And Jesus gave us mercy though we don't deserve it. Yeah. It's time to pass it on forward. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. And same thing with the lost. Yeah. yeah. The lost don't have mercy. Yeah. Come on, bro. We know mercy. Yeah. Since baptism. Right, right. We had to walk in the blessings of mercy from God. Amen. Right. But the lost, they, they don't know that. They have versions of it. They have prepackaged ideas of it. Yeah, come on. Some of them don't even care to know even a version of it. Yeah, right. But we know the fullness of it. Mm. And we got to be willing to open our mouth and bring them the mercy of God. Right, come on. You know what's crazy is that when you practice 
being merciful to your brother. One, it allows you to be more Christ-like. Yeah. But two, it allows both of you to understand the mercy of God even more oh, yeah. deeply. That's so true. Yeah. So for those, let's fight to shed the merciless Come blood. On, Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. I believe if we shed the blood of these three areas, Come on. Yeah. that we will find joy. Come on. We will find peace from God on, yeah. because blessed bloodshed. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Come on, bro.